Something that came about with the advent of mobile browsers, mobile devices capable of browsing the internet, and uh, that is now spread to pretty much every browser out there, is the ability to get geolocation. So this is the latitude and longitude of your current position or the position of your device. Um, we're actually able to get a whole bunch of properties depending on the device capability. Some devices will give you latitude, longitude, um, they'll give you an accuracy reading, so how close they estimate it to be, and this comes down to whether you're using actual GPS or if they're using cell tower triangulation or if they're using just the IP address of the web server that you're going through. Um, or your Wi-Fi network is another one. Heading, so the direction you're facing, so if the device has a compass, you can get that uh, speed, whatever direction you're moving in, how fast in meters per second you're traveling, your altitude, and a timestamp to say when this uh, request took place. So this is all sorts of information that we can get from the built-in geolocation object. So I've got a web page here. I'm going to be writing out all this information in the web page once we have the script running. Right now we've got... Um, there it is, just the blank page. So just this information. We don't have anything written out there yet. But we're going to fetch that information right about. So every browser has a navigator object. Uh, this used to be where you'd find things like the user agent. What browser are you using? Is it Internet Explorer or Netscape? Um, inside the navigator object, there is a another object called geolocation and this is the object that allows you to request the person's permission uh, <laughs> request the person's permission to find their location so geolocation it has a few methods and uh, we're going to be looking at the get current position this is the one you most commonly use it's a single request for the person's location all right now the basic setup of what i've got here on the web page we've got DOM content loaded, so after the page is loaded, call the init function. The init function right here, I have an if statement to see if the browser has a geolocation property. If they don't, the person is using an old browser. Now, not many browsers now don't support it, but it's still good to check. You don't want to have your website crash just because you didn't bother to do one single if statement in your code. Now, I have two other functions, got position and position fail. The geolocation object, the method that we're going to be using for navigator geolocation, I'll get all probably symbols, geolocation get current position. That's the method that we're going to be calling. Get current position requires two, and it has an optional third parameter to be passed to it. The first two parameters are a success callback and a fail callback. So if it's able to get the position, it'll call this function. If it doesn't, it'll call the second one. So we can say got pause and pause and fail. There we are. There's the two functions. And you can see pause fail is expecting an error to be passed to it. This is just a variable name, it's not anything special. This is actually just a number for the reason. Uh, the possible values are 1, 2, and 3. Number 1 being there was no permission, so the person denied permission in their browser for the request to be made for the location. That's number one, no permission. Number two, unable to determine. So for some network reason or some other failure, it was unable to determine your position. And number three, it just took too long. It timed out. And that brings us to the third parameter here. There is another parameter. We're going to call it options. I put a variable up here for options, declared it. This is an object. Inside the object, there are three possible um, properties. You 
should define all three if you're creating the if you are creating the options object. Define all three properties. So, enable high accuracy. This means, do you want the device to try and use GPS as opposed to just the cell towers or opposed to just using this, the Wi-Fi network that you're on to determine your position? Um, the downside to enable high accuracy is it drains the battery more. So if you're going to be frequently calling on the person's position and you don't need to use the actual GPS, I'd recommend setting this to false. Uh, you don't want to drain the person's uh, device with your web app. Uh, it's just a it's an easy way to turn people off. If they find out every time they're going to your website, their battery life is just draining because you're constantly hitting the GPS radio. Timeout is the second one. And this is how long until you want the device to give up. So 30 seconds is probably a good amount of time. Uh, if you want to go up to 60 seconds, fine. But remember, the longer the timeout, the longer the device is going to try and continue to use the radio, again, draining the battery to determine the position. So weigh, weigh the amount of time against the battery life. And maximum age. This is going to be um, once you fetch to position, that information is going to be cached by the browser. It's going to hold on to that information. When you make another request, it's going to go back to the cache to get that information until you hit this point. So how long is that information going to be valid for? You need to consider why are you asking for the person position? Is it so that you can do an address lookup when they're submitting an order? Okay, so once an hour, once a day? More than sufficient. Um, if you are building a web app that's determining the person's location because you're tracking where they're moving throughout a neighborhood, well, maybe five minutes, ten minutes would be a better choice for that. If it's something where somebody's moving around very frequently and they're moving at a fairly uh, fast pace, well, maybe then you want to move to something like 30 seconds, something closer to the timeout. Anyway, it's up to you. Just keep in mind that the more frequently you request it, the longer the timeout, the higher the accuracy, the more you're going to be draining the person's battery. Now, I've just put variable names in here. These aren't actual property names or anything. Um, these are variables that we need to define. And to old. Now, I'm going to use an hour for too old, and for give up, I'm going to use 30 seconds. These are both values that are numeric, which represent the number of milliseconds. So 30 seconds is 1,000 milliseconds is 1 second, times 30, 30 seconds. For an hour, 1,000 milliseconds, that's 1 second, times 60 gives you a minute, times 60 gives you an hour. There we go. Alright, so we've set our timeout as 30 seconds, our maximum age is 1 hour, we're going to enable high accuracy just for the sake of argument. We're going to call get current position, and then it's going to call this or this, depending on whether or not it works. So spans will be document query selector. I want to find all of the spans that are inside paragraphs in my page because well, that's where I'm going to write this information out. So this is going to be a collection of spans. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So numbers zero through six. This will be like an array, and I can target it with the square bracket syntax, and then a number between zero and six. Getting back to our geolocation information here, position is the object that's going to hold all of the information about our current location. So spans number zero. That's this one. That's our latitude. And 1 is going to be our longitude. And 
first content would be what we get out of that position object. Okay, in the position object, in this variable, there is a chords property, which holds almost everything, and then there is a timestamp property, which is at the same level as chords, so position.timestamp. Everything else is inside of chords. So there's the latitude, position.chords.longitude. Go and time. Timestamp. And because JavaScript is really not that consistent when it comes to its name convention, I can't remember if it's a capital S or lowercase s here for the timestamp. It could be either. We'll, uh, we'll test it out. If we get nothing for the capital S, we'll switch it back. And uh, for the error, we're going to say that errors is an object and one, two, and three. These are the possible values that we're going to get back. This ERR will be the number one, two, or three. Number one is no permission, so the person turned down the page and said, no, you're not allowed to uh, make a request. I'm able to determine, and number three was, took too long, it timed out. We passed that 30 second timeout. And let's just put this in there. Replace the heading. H1 text content equals this object dot this. Treat it like it's an array and put the number inside there, and that is the value. And I just realized here. Query selector all is what we want. We want the collection. We don't want a single element. We want all of them. So now we can do this. All right. So we have that. Now let's take a look in our browser. Refresh this. Console, unexpected number, line 37. Oh, of course, no comma. There. there we go. So this is the permission request. If I block this, I'm going to get the error number 3. So it didn't give me that. I said, nope, you're not allowed to ask for it. Settings for future visits, refresh, allow it this time. So it's going to try and determine. Now I'm on a laptop here, so I'm not going to get much in the way of the other information. Uh, I won't get a heading or a speed or an altitude because MacBook Pros don't have a compass built into it. Um, time did not give me time stamp, so let's go to the S. And I should be able to actually get an accuracy setting. So let's add that one in here. There we go. So there's my latitude, there's my longitude. You can now send in your missile strike against me. Um, accuracy, this is the number of meters that we have um, that is being estimated. So Within 34 meters is their rough approximation of how accuracy this latitude and longitude is. And there's the timestamp. For heading speed and accuracy, it's just the just continuing on here, chords dot heading, chords dot speed, chords dot altitude. So I'll let you try that out in your own time. I'll take all this JavaScript and I'll put it in the code just for you. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.